Today's video is brought to you by Envato Elements, the Netflix of graphic design. Envato Elements turbocharges your workflow by giving you unlimited access to state-of-the-art Photoshop resources. Access thousands of powerful Photoshop actions, install beautiful brushes, gorgeous text effects, and over 50 million stock photos. Click the link in my description below the video and take your Photoshop work to the next level today. Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you another quick method to create the look of watercolor paintings from photos. This is an update of tutorials I've done on the subject. I provided this watercolor paper texture that we'll use to create a pattern and a black and white image of brush strokes that you can download. Their links are in my video's description below the video or in my project files. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, hit that small subscribe button at the lower right to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. Open the paper texture and go to Edit and Define Pattern. Then click OK. Open a photo that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded the photos in the intro from Shutterstock and Envato. The first step is to check your photo's size and resolution by going to Image and Image Size. Make its resolution 72 pixels per inch to ensure that the filter settings we'll be using will have similar results as mine. The width and height can be any amount. We'll convert our photo into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively, as well as allow us to replace it with a different photo without having to redo all the effects. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll use this layer to fill our document with the watercolor paper texture I provided. Check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Let's temporarily fill the empty layer with black or white. The color is irrelevant since we're going to fill the layer with the watercolor paper pattern. I'll press Ctrl or Command plus Delete to fill it with the background color, which is black. Click the FX icon and click Pattern Overlay. Immediately, the solid color is replaced with the last pattern we saved, which is the watercolor paper texture. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 100%. I'll make the scale 17%, however, feel free to adjust this amount based on the size of your document. Then, click OK or press Enter or Return. We want to change its blend mode, however, in order for the blend mode to work, we need to first convert the pattern overlay into a smart object. Name it Watercolor Paper. Change its blend mode to Multiply. Next, we'll add the Paint Daubs filter. Hide the middle layer and make the bottom layer active. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Artistic Folder and click Paint Daubs. The brush size is 4, the sharpness is 6, and the brush type is Wide Sharp. Click the Blending Options icon and change the Blend Mode to Lighten. Go to Filter, Blur, and Smart Blur. The Radius is 10, the Threshold is 30, and the Quality is High. To save space in the Layers panel, let's collapse the Smart Filters. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Vibrance. Drag the Vibrance slider all the way to the right to increase the vibrancy of the colors. 
The difference between vibrance and saturation is this. Saturation intensifies all the colors in an image, while vibrance affects just the more muted colors and leaves the already well-saturated colors alone. In this particular example, the colors of the original photo are already well saturated, so increasing the saturation isn't necessary. For your photo, feel free to increase the saturation if you think it needs it. Next, we'll add pencil lines. Make the middle layer visible and active. Go back to Filter and Filter Gallery. Close the Artistic folder and open the Stylize folder. Click Glowing Edges. The edge width is 1, the edge brightness is 12, and the smoothness is 15. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Invert. It's important to know that adjustment layers affect all of the layers below them in the Layers panel. Since we want it to affect just the one layer below it, the Glowing Edges layer, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to that layer. To do this, either click the Clipping Mask icon or press alt Control g on Windows or Option-Command-G on a Mac. You can also go to Layer and create Clipping Mask. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again and this time click Black and White. Then clip it to the Glowing Edges layer. Make that layer active and change the Blend Mode to Multiply. I'll reduce the pencil line's opacity to 80%, but feel free to keep it at 100% for your image. Next, we'll adjust our image's tonal range. Scroll to the top and make the Watercolor Paper layer active. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again, and this time click Curves. We won't clip it to the watercolor paper since we want the tonal range to affect our entire image. The Curves panel shows the full range of tonality of our image from black to white. We can control the midtones with much more precision over other similar adjustment layers such as levels. By dragging the diagonal line from a specific location in any direction, it'll modify that particular tone you dragged it from. In this example, I drag the mid-tones straight down, which will darken them. I'll drag the lighter tones up, which will lighten them, thus creating more of a subtle contrast. Open the brush strokes image I provided. With your Move tool active, drag the image onto the tab of your photo. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. To resize and modify its shape to conform to your photo's width and height, Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2019, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. If you're using CC 2019 or later, just press Alt or Option as you drag it. To change its width or height independently, go to the anchor point on the middle of a side or on the top or bottom of the bounding box and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag them in or out. Then press Enter or Return. I'll cancel the transform since I already sized it to my photo. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or Command click any of the channels to make a selection of all the tones in your image. Open back the Layers panel. Drag the brush stroke image to the trash can since we have its selection. Make the Pencil Lines layer active and click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to it. This masks out the pencil lines outside the white area of the layer mask. Think of layer masks as stencils. White reveals and black conceals. Go to the layer mask and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it next to the photo. If you want to adjust your image's contrast even more, go back to the Curves Adjustment layer and adjust the curve to your liking. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.